against Rivaldi and Mentari of Indonesia. Both these pairs are ranked inside the world's top 20. So we should be in for a pretty competitive affair, you think. There's how the uh, draw was panned out. So in round two, Yamashita and Shinoya await. So we could have a, an all Japanese second round clash here. They're the 15th seeds. Yamashita and Shinoya got a buy through to round two. Now we're going to find out who will join them. And I am delighted to say that Bobby Griffin has joined me up here in the commentary box. And it's a tough one to call this, Bobby, I think, on paper. Not much in the rankings. Um, although Rivaldi and Mentari have got a decent record on the head to head. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, from Japan. I'm a bit worried about calling things on the best of days. I give a bit of a hunch, uh, you know, maybe a 55% sort of sort of uh, preference to a player or pair winning the match. But honestly, this one, it's completely 50-50. Yeah. The head-to-head, -head, like you said, gives something away. But, but two of those meetings, they've met three times. You'll, you'll talk about it in a minute. But two of those went the distance. And looking at their results and performances in recent months, Absolutely impossible to call. Rivaldi and Mentari on their way. What have we got today, Trevor? Is that a bit of ABBA? I was just about to say, yes. I'm not, I'm not sure that the Danes play that much ABBA, do they? That's a Scandinavian rival countries group, but none there. I think ABBA's a global phenomenon, isn't it? Anyhow, Rivaldi and Mentari on their way to court, the world number 16 pair. They've won both the meetings this year against the Japanese duo of Midori Kawa and Saito. Well, there's confirmation of that last meeting that okay. did go the distance in the Asia Championships. It's in the round of 16. And then the previous meeting this year uh, was in the round of 32 of the Indonesia Masters, where Rafaldi and Mentari won in straight games. And I, I don't think you should ever underestimate the importance of head-to-heads because it does create a little kind of psychological barrier, in this case for Midori, Kawa and Saito, that until you've beaten a pen, especially when you've played them three times, not like just a one-off meeting previously, you're always kind of a little bit reticent that they've got the upper hand over you some, in some fashion. So let's give you a bit of information then about this quartet, starting with the Japanese pair, Midori Kawa, who's 23 now. Just about their highest ranking. They just slipped one spot from where they were in the last few weeks. And the big result they had was victory at the Canada Open in Calgary last month. That was a Super 500. They'd actually been runners-up in that event previous year when it was a Super 100. Saito's the same age as a partner. And they've had a decent year. They were, as well as that Canada result, they were runners-up in the Australian Open. First two big events they've won. They had success previously in international events all around the world. Belgium, Vietnam, New Zealand. So we look at Rivaldi of Indonesia. Former World Junior Boys doubles champion a few years ago. have been up in the uh, top ten in the world, these two, as we look at Mentari. This season, they've had a lot of first-round exits. best they've done is quarter-finals in the Swiss Open, Malaysia Masters, Indonesia Open and the Australia Open, but not really the season that they would want to have so far.
Ten I Ting from Malaysia is the umpire and Freak Kok Salu from the Netherlands is in the service judges chair. They have won a couple of tour titles, Rivaldi and Mentari, the last of which was the Spain Masters a couple of years ago. Not really the, the season they wanted to have, Bobby, I don't think so far, Rivaldi and Mentari. No, I mean, I actually first saw them live at the World Tour Finals back end of last year, it must have been December, and um, they came through against uh, a strong-looking uh, Giquel and Del Rue of France and pushed um, Deschapol and Sapsiri all the way in the semi-final. I think they lost 14 in the third, but I was blown away by, by these young Indonesians. Um, Rivaldi, you don't want to go messing with him in the mid-court, he's devastating. Uh, incredible backhand. Um, yeah, I think Midori Kara and Saito have uh, got a tough test here. Well, we'll see how it pans out. As we said, difficult to pick a favourite, let alone a winner. Umpire introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Natsu Saito and Hiroki Midorikawa, Japan. And on my left, Pita Hanintias Mantari and Rino Riwadi, Indonesia. Rino Riwadi to serve to Natsu Saito. Lock all, play. <laughs> So here we go for the first of uh, successive mixed doubles matches on court one this morning. Service over. One love. More evidence of that drift Service from left over. to right. One all. Oh. What kind of a match are you expecting here, Bobby? Long rallies, short rallies? Oh, brilliant. Um, Service over. It's, Two, one. Oh, it's really tough to say. I mean, Rivaldi and Mentari want that sort of mid-to-net pressure, um, like you see in uh, level doubles all so often. Um, that's where they're strong. They're so quick with their rackets and they're so powerful. I think if they could, if the Japanese can keep the Indonesians at the back of the courts, their defence is great. Um, and like you said, the Indonesians aren't having the best of year right now, whereas they've got the three nil heads ahead. Yet the Japanese have won that Canada Open recently against a really strong looking uh, Danish pair, uh, Turi and Magaland. They were in the final at the Australian Open. They're really in form. Um, I don't know, is the answer. I think it's all going to come down to who can take the initiative as early as possible, get the attack, and then find a way through somehow. But <laughs> until we see it evolve, it's really difficult to, uh, to say. Great block from Saito there that landed on the line in a rally that the Indonesians have dominated. And there you go, that's an example. They're really trying to take the initiative. Nobody wants to give the lift away to the... Uh, both of the females were really trying to hold net then. Service over. Two, three. We watched, it's a contrast. We watched the mix with uh, Greg and Jenny Mayers yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and we were impressed initially by the Serbians, but then suddenly, instead of trying to hold the net and take the initiative, they were happy to defend, and that's when it all fell apart. And that's what we'll see here who's got the mental strength and ability to keep the attack. And not make mistakes. That's two from uh, Midori Kawa. Two opportunities missed. Four, 
Oof. It's broken his string. He hits it so hard, he's going to break lots of strings because it's, it's players that are trying to hit as hard as they can in that mid-court area. That's when we see a lot of strings get broken. And like I said, his wrist strength in that mid-court is amazing. Hope he's got a forgiving racket sponsor. <laughs> I think he's playing with Victor, as far as I can uh, see by the stencil on the strings. Yeah, both of them. And the shirts, of course. Just a precautionary Six, strapping on Natsu Saito's knee. See there, the right knee. That's lovely play from Mentari. Seven, four. Yeah, she was there early and deceptive. Saito had to stop and wait in case the shuttle was played at pace. Just feathered it over the net. Five, seven. Not hanging around in terms Six, of uh, speed seven. of serving, which is good to see. Defense from Saito. Oh. <laughs> She's just out fought them. So, over. so busy around the net, isn't she? She really is. And I thought Midi Cara was doing um, really well here. Playing with a lot of control, looking very relaxed, but I think he was almost too complacent. Didn't give uh, Mentara enough respect. So it's over. Seven, eight. But at the moment, it's kind of going winner, error, winner, error. And as we expected, not much between these pairs. Well, I think that was another string broken. That sounded very weird, yeah. the final shot. Yeah, there we go. It all. You'd be a good conductor. <laughs> Incredible defence. Effortless, that backhand drive. See, most people would struggle there because they haven't got a lot of time to put a lot of pace on the shuttle. It's all wrist strength. And, that, yeah, that shot. From that position, that is top class. It was terrific defence from the Indonesians because Midori Kawa was really hammering those smashes. Exactly what I was saying. They play a great point and then a bit of a soft one. It's a very clever piece of placement. Given the form they've been in, I think um, I'm a little surprised by the number of uh, unforced errors, really, although it's, it's been a great contest so far. There have been a few mistakes, but it's, it's day one for them. You know, it's the found round of 64 match for them. New arena, yes, they've been here warming up and practicing, but 
as we go to the mid game at 11 9 to the uh, japanese pair they it's new conditions for them it's it's a new um, it's a new arena so it's you can expect a few uh, easy mistakes Eleven nine play. Hey. Shot. Hit it back from whence it came. Nine. <laughs> I didn't expect that to come back, did he? <laughs> His partner was stood right behind him, uh, Rivaldi. Mentari wanted the shot. There we go. Out of position, and I'm not sure he knew where she was going to move next. Yeah, I think he, I think he reckoned he played the winner as well. Cool. Lucky about her reaction. She could have got a face full of racket then. <laughs> Out. Service over. 10-13. Footless power, the pace of the shot with such a short action. This third shot from Rivaldi. Straight through the defence of uh, Midori Kawa. If they're going to defend, they need to put him on the back line here. That's better. We can, I mean, we could dissect every single rally. I, I love getting my geek on about it, Trevor, but uh, the previous point, uh, Mentari's shot went up. This time she's able to keep it going down. Sounds like such an easy thing, but it's, it's yeah. really not. 15, 14.
controlled attack from uh, Rivaldi, but... 16, they're standing up to it. And it was the shot quality until that last one, really, from the Japanese to prevent um, Rivaldi hitting hard. I think Mentari could have done better, though. That's another string, I think. What's that? What is that? Three in three, the first game? Three in the first game, yeah. That's all. Hope he brought a few power. spares with him. Yeah, I hope so too. We had one of our uh, GB athletes a couple of months ago, got to the final, had six rackets in his bag, broke them all within a game and a half. <laughs> Same sort of problem, really. The wrist strength's so big. And um, you can't, of course, continue. Your, your rackets need to be there. You're yeah. not allowed to take a break yeah. and get some. Yeah. Your coaching staff will have to somehow find rackets for you and get them to the bag without really anyone noticing, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's hard. Yeah, not normally something you'd associate with a, a coach's uh, job. So 17 all, it's nip and tuck here in this opening game. Business end is when the pressure's really on, and again, too hot for Montari to do anything with it the net. So hard, doesn't it? Really does. Vino so Rivaldi. Yeah, I mean, considering he doesn't have the height of some players. Yeah, he generates a decent angle. Just five foot nine he is. And that is usually associated with the biggest smashes in the world. But it's when he's early in the midcourt, so that's just wrist strength. Over. Well, a bit of good Ten fortune 18. there. 18. Yeah. Worth its weight in gold at this stage of proceedings. Superb, the punch clear. So deceptive. Saito had no clue. And he was in one back box to the next with the shot. This is incredible. Yeah, that's about the furthest you could ever hit a, a yeah. shuttle in terms of it being, you know, in, the, in play, and in the bounds of play. One corner to the other diagonally. 19 all. This is terrific. Brilliant. There again, placement and power, the control. I said it again. You, 20, <laughs> you can't give him time in the midcourt. If this shuttle's going up, which it was, oh, it's devastating. Game point then for the Indonesians. That was never coming back. That was a bit of a gift. Much better from Adori Kawa. He was forced to lift here across at some stage. Yeah, well, just before, but it was so flat and aggressive that it didn't give uh, Rivaldi any time. Better defence.
And a terrific point again. Service over. 21-20. I feel myself moving forwards on the edge of my seat, you know, as it gets <laughs> to these kind of stages. It's, uh, yeah, the nerves are starting to jingle. Game point again. Such fine margins. Missed that by a fraction. Well, same missed by a fraction. They are challenging it. it. Looks like it's out, but I guess at this juncture he may as well. Nothing to lose. It might have just clipped the edge of the line. Don't think so. But and I think uh, when the nerves are starting to um, take over in the match, it gives yourself a chance to kind of just yeah. reset, have a break, have a chat. You know, maybe come up with a strategy to try and close out a game. Um, well within the uh, laws. 21 or play. <laughs> Oof, slam dunk. Well, they keep giving themselves chances. They need to take one. Third opportunity now for Rivaldi and Mentari to secure this opening game. Yeah, it was Mentari that did the damage, hunting that net, like you said earlier. She's all over the forecourt. Well, that'll work. A um, bit of an anticlimax in the end, but 23-21. And it's the Indonesians that draw first blood here. And you just wonder, too, and bearing in mind the fact they've won the three previous meetings, whether that will just sow a few seeds of doubt in the two uh, Japanese minds. We'll see. Second game, lock all play. <laughs> Good judgment that from Saito. So Always tricky when it's coming four. over your shoulder in that fashion. Great speed of movement, Saito. They kept uh, Mentari at the back. Rivaldi had to cover the forecourt here, and then she's just trying to get in as early as she can. 
That's not where uh, Rivaldi wanted to be. There's a change of tactics here, I like, and I like it. Look at uh, Midori Kawa here. It was a weak shot, and he hunted the net, knowing he could get there quicker than his partner. And again, look, Midori Kawa's at the net again. There's an old sort of tradition in mixed doubles about the man's the big, powerful, mid-to-rear kind of aggressor yeah. and the females pushing forwards. But when you see pairs in recent years like um, uh, Deshapal, Pua Varunukro and Sapsiri Tara Tanachai or, um, I don't know, uh, Yuta Watanabe and uh, Arisa Higashino doing so well, but they're equally good in reverse. And today, the Japanese needed a change of tactics Four, two. That's lovely. So it's, over. it's kind of speed of thought, speed of movement, and then touch, all encompassed in one fluid motion, takes about a second. It's probably my favourite thing about badminton is it's a fast, aggressive rally at times to then move fast, get up early and then play something gentle and soft with control. That is what makes the sport so beautiful without sounding too corny about it. Oh, it's corny at all. So quick again. Natsu Saito at the net. Six, three. Well, it's been a good response so far from Midori Kawa and Saito having dropped the opening game. <laughs> Tough to leave those coming at that speed. Have to make a Split second decision. Ah, Saito again here. Backhand and then round the head forehand. That's great technique. It's the feet in the right position. And she's looking to cut out that shot. That's all she cares about. Forehand drive up the line. That's all she's worried about at that stage. Nine, four. Makes her partner's job so much easier as well because the forecourt players looking for something in doubles means the partner doesn't have to worry about it. So then he can concentrate on the rest. And too often we see pairs that aren't that skilled. The forecourt player stands still in the middle and her partner's got to cover everything and that's when it becomes a real challenge. Well, it was stoic defence while it lasted from Adura Kara and Saito. In the end, Indonesians wouldn't be denied. Yeah, he took it early. Midori Kawa slightly out of position. Six, nine. Service over. Unforced errors have been few and far Six. between in this match.
Well, gets the luck. And I tell you what, this is uh, a more assertive looking Japanese pair in the second game. Positive play, prepared to take more risks, but also controlling the attack from the back. And they're on the attack a lot more than they were in the first. Yeah, 11-6 at the mid-game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow, <laughs> wonderful. That really is Six. wonderful technique, wasn't it? Just clever, inventive. This touch at pace, going back across her own body. She's in this half of the court before the shuttle gets played, and then she... Brilliant. And lands it in the tram lines. There were shots in that rally where, in the first, they were giving away the lift and pushing through to mid-court, and some of the shots were going up to the Indonesians, and that's when uh, Rivaldi was taking control. That previous rally that was so good with the finish, they held the attack and they just kept it going down without pace necessarily, but holding the attack. That's been the difference since the beginning of this second game. A big adjustment, I think, from the strategy they had. Same there. Didn't give away a lift. And consequently, the scoreline has a very lopsided look at the moment in the second game. It's actually a really um, positive um, situation to be in because... Oh, brilliant. For me, I said at the beginning, 50-50, very difficult to call. Well, it changed to about... 52-48 percentage at the end of the first because I don't think the Japanese had their strategy at all right and yet they took it to extra points. It's that close. Now they've got a strategy that's working and look at the difference. Yeah, well, it'll be very interesting to see how the Indonesians have to adapt a little bit as soon as we do go to a deciding game, which is likely but not definite. No, I mean, they could adapt now and try and find a different way to keep the attack, and that might change everything. This is excellent <laughs> from the Japanese. They were on top, they were behind, they were on top again. It just kept shifting. Well, it was a terrific play from all four of them, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Wonderful rally again. They have provided us with some top-class entertainment, and it looks like it's going to continue for another half an hour or so. 16-8, third game looming. I liked Rivaldi's um, reaction as well. Eight. He's well behind on the scoreboard, and they lost that terrific rally. But he's still smiling, you know, he's enjoying being out here. I think all four of them convey a sense of that, don't they?
defence from Midorikawa. Incredible. 18, eight. Given how strong Rivaldi is in that mid-court when he's sitting down. <laughs> that was nonchalant, wasn't it? 19, eight. That's all going their way, isn't it? What about this backhand? Like it was the easiest thing in the world. Twenty game point eight. Well, the well. Japanese know. I think that they can feel it. They're just uh, unfazed, and they can lift. They can do whatever they like now at game point. Yeah, just the twelve of them. <laughs> Well, I don't think too many would have predicted such a one-sided scoreline in the second game, but 21-8 it is, one game all decided to come. Oh, depannya sana nggak tahu kali kok, ya, fokus saja nggak apa-apa, ya, ya, kayak pertama tadi lagi nolok dulu, ya, nolok, harus berat, ya, nolok dicepetin lagi, ya, ayo, gitu aja, ya, ayo, ya, lebih, ini, cd-nya ditungguin dong, ya, fokus, nyangkut terus, dia jangan terlalu tipping, geser dikit, pokoknya intinya kontrol enak ya, ya, kontrol emosinya, ya. ちょっと前入っちゃってもいいみたいな。ちょっとあったかい。さっきの感じ。予測して。もし上がれば、前、前入った時だけ、ちょっと、ちょっとハーフ、ラケットを上げとくか。前、前、前、前、前、前、前、
<laughs> what a shot that was from Saito. The hairpin, it literally went up and then came down. I thought 180 degrees. Incredible. That save as well from Rivaldi. That's a brilliant display of mixed doubles, this. Look at that. Casually gets up. Yeah, it was nothing rushed about it, was there, either? <laughs> Calm as you like. Good serve. Wow. What about that from Mentari? Savisova. Three, two. She was outfoxed straight away off serve under real pressure throughout and somehow backs herself in defence. If you uh, weren't with us from the start, that Rivaldi and Mentari have a three-love head-to-head record over the two Japanese, and it might be just about now that's starting to come into the back of Midori Kara and Saito's mind that just when they thought they had uh, an edge, having won that second game easily, they're under pressure again here. Great defence from the Japanese pair. Still. And in the end, I think there was frustration from Rivaldi. Maybe a bit of weariness as well. He'd hit probably 10 or 12 like that in that point. Been a bit more variation actually in this third so far. Some flick serves and ah! Oof, that was a lovely return. Service over. Six, three. And Midori Kara in that previous rally just happy to defend into the back line. What a save! That was pure instincts. Unbelievable, the rally. But you can see the Indonesians have stepped it up again despite the heroics there. It just will not be denied. That's terrific stuff. It's almost like losing that second game so heavily is kind of spark them back to life in a way 35 shot rally previously great lesson for um, people developing their mixed game. Look, she just got a racket in the right place and then barely had to move. She's only worried about that cross drive, knowing that her partner's covering the straight one. Everything else comes later, whether it's a net shot, a lift, 
You don't worry about it. Cover the drive. Unbelievable defence again from Mentari. How is it still going? Five, eight. Change? No. Change. We've got more of the same coming up next, Trevor, haven't we, with um, Turi and Magaland? against he and Tan. Yeah, and the Danes beat... No, the Danes lost the Canada Open final to the Japanese pair we're watching now, didn't they? So they're all around that sort of same level. And I think waiting in the uh, next round tomorrow is Yamashita and Shinoya, who, again, similar rankings in the world. It's, it's a tough, tough mixed doubles draw. We should expect nothing less, I suppose. It's the World Championships. Service over. It's exactly what Nine, you want. I think... The next match might be just as close and just as exciting as this one. Indonesians in charge at the moment, but it's ebbed and flowed so many ways so quickly that I don't really want to predict anything. That's a top shot to set up the easy winner. As well, no. What's Nine, happened here? Five. I think uh, he may have touched the net, did he? Midori so. Kawa. Freight Cox was sat there with the uh, service judge, sat there with his um, hand up somewhere. There's nothing. Oh, he's hit the shuttle on their side of the court. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> millimetres <laughs> over. Too keen. That, that pace, <laughs> that's um, good Six. eyes, I think, by uh, Mr. Cox. Alu. Well, so look of more. disgust from Natsu Saito because interval. that Change mistake ends. means the Indonesians have a five-point lead at the mid-game break. They are in control of this match now. But you still wouldn't be at all surprised if there was another twist to come. I think the change of ends as well is crucial here yeah. because they're going to go back onto that side where they had so much success there. Whatever strategy it was, was working from that end of the court. And yeah, it's not over yet, this one. Okay. Hot one, Okay. Eleven six. Play. Twelve six. Just completely got their mojo back. The Indonesians profoundly into wide open empty space on the other side of the net and errors now creeping into the japanese pairs game <laughs> wonderful Such a delicate touch from uh, Mentari. Turn of the wrist at the last minute. 
and away she went. Out, service over, 7-14. Well, there has really have been sparse in this match. I mean, so many winners, so many really clever angles created. Quick. Yeah, and those errors have been uh, forced upon their opponents. When you're trying not to give away the lift and you're caught in a narrow position, technically it's difficult. It's uh, no surprise. That is brilliant. The first smash so accurate onto that right hip, the right pocket of Mentari. Weaker reply, and then anywhere that shot could have gone. That shot was great. And maybe the advantage of having that far end just starting to tell. Still right in this, the Japanese. Unbelievable. Service over. That's such a high 15, level. 10. See how hard the uh, Indonesians are working not to uh, give away the attack. If they do, the Japanese are dangerous from that end of the court, Trevor, like you said. Well, I think it looks like they've got them where they want them now. Rivaldi and Mental, we got through that sticky little period four or five points ago where got it back to a deficit of four the Japanese and looked like there might be a, a comeback on still might but it's a lot harder from here long way back Just two points away now, 19, then. 10. Rivaldi and Mentari. So this overall, 11, 19. So here are nine match points for Rivaldi and Mentari for a place in the round of 32. Amazing, isn't it? After such a one-sided second game when the Japanese were in charge, they've been absolutely blitzed in that decider have uh, Midori Kawa and Saito. Pretty quick match, considering it was three games, just 53 minutes on court. And that jinx that's afflicting Midori Kawa and Saito against the Indonesians goes on. That's now four successive matches, all four matches they've played and now lost against the Indonesian pair. This was the final moment. Match Almost appropriate Rino, would be a power shot from Rivaldi. 23, 21, Terrific 8, match. 21, Won and lost in the third for 21, me. 11. And if every round of 64 match we see in all the events here are like that, 
then I think the badminton fans around the world will be in for a real treat. Well, I'm glad you said that, because we've got another one coming up uh, momentarily. 20, uh, 23-21, 8-21, 21-11, the final score here. Match time, just confirming that. 54 minutes on court. Well, as mentioned, there is more mixed doubles to follow, and it should be good too. Terry He and Jessica Tan, the Commonwealth Games champions, against Turi and Magaland, who will have all the home support. That's in a few moments' time. What a warm welcome back to Denmark on the islands of uh, Amar and Sirelen. Glorious day outside and pretty warm inside too. If you're with us over the last uh, hour or so, you'd have seen an absolutely terrific mixed doubles match. Rivaldi and Mentari coming through in three games against the Japanese pair. Pandora Kawa and Saito. And we're going to continue the mixed doubles theme with another round of 64 clash between Terry He and Jessica Tan and Matthias Turi and uh, Amelie Magellan. Well, here's how it all fits into the draw. Number five seed, Sio and Chai await the winners. It's going to be a tough for whoever comes through here. 